Hello everyone, it's Denry from Craft of Giving and in today's video I would love to share how to make this super cute little polymer clay fairy. I started to create the fairy by creating the tree stump she's sitting on first by using a sheet of aluminium foil that I scrunched up really tight into a little stump shape and then covered it in polymer clay. This just allows your figure to be quite light and not clay dense and make it sure that it's nice and supported. So scrunch your aluminium foil quite hard and compact it really tightly and then cover it in the colour of your tree stump. I'm just using this nice little brown colour and I just rolled it out thinly and then wrapped it around my aluminium stump and added a few bits of detail for the stump by drawing little lines across the sides of my stump. I then started with the fairy's legs. So I'm going to work from my bottom up and I just rolled out a nice long piece of beige clay making sure that the middle part of my little snake um, of clay was a bit thicker and then getting narrower towards the sides. I cut that piece of clay in half and then started to create the thigh by creating an indent behind the knee and then bending that knee down and creating the foot, adding a bit of detail and shape to the leg to create a nice feminine little fairy leg. You will need to do this for both pieces of clay so that you end up with two even sized legs for your fairy. I use my first leg as a guide where, for where the knee should be um, so that it's nice and even. Now you can be as detailed as you like with your legs. I just like to add um, a bit of shape with the thigh and then the calf going into the ankle and then the little foot. And then I added some further little details later on that I'll show you in a minute. Now to secure the leg a bit more, um, as the clay is quite thin, I'm just adding a little piece of wire that I'm just going to trim to size and then shove it gently into her foot up into her leg um, just to support the clay a little bit more as it is a thin piece of clay. So being careful, uh, make sure that you go nice and slow with this so that you don't accidentally stab through the leg. I used my tool just to push that into the foot even further and use my smoothing tool to just smooth out any marks. So as I said, I added a bit more detail, so I'm adding little toes. Now I know she doesn't have five toes, she only has four toes, but that's okay. So do this for both of your legs and then you can start to get creative in the position that she's sitting on the little stump. I'm going to make it so that she crosses her leg over the top of her right leg so that it looks nice and cute. But you can be as creative as you like in the sense of how she's sitting and her positioning and posture or whatever. And then I'm using the same technique with the alfoil to create the body of my fairy just so that I don't have to use a lot of clay that's quite heavy. So here I'm just rolling the clay nice and tight again and drilling a little hole into the bottom and the top so we can insert a wire there later and then I covered this in the beige clay as well. Now because we will cover the fairy it doesn't need to be super smooth um, but as long as it's all covered and looking pretty then it's okay. So here I'm just going to add a nice thick wire into the base of my tree trunk to support the back and head of my fairy so that it, it sits nice and straight and not fall over and break. So I inserted the piece of wire straight through the body into the tree stump and this will also be the support for the neck and the head of my fairy. So I added another chunk of clay just on top to elongate the body a bit and give me some clay to work with to shape her little body. Now as it is a female fairy, don't be shocked but I will be adding some feminine features. You don't have to be super detailed with this as it will be covered but I just want that rough shape. Here I'm just smoothing out any lines to create a nice smooth finish as I will be covering the top but I'd need it to be nice and smooth underneath but it doesn't need to be super duper perfect. I'm not spending a lot of time smoothing out the legs where the legs meet the body um, as it will be covered. So I'm just pinching that clay up into the neck to create a little neck around the wire and then starting to shape her feminine features. Um, just roughly it doesn't need to be super detailed as I said it will be covered but I need to have that shape on her body as it is a female fairy
After you're happy with the body, it's time to move on to the arms. So I'm using the same technique as we did for the legs by rolling out a really long sort of snake of beige clay for the arms, trimming that in half and then matching it up with the other arm to create an even length for both arms. And then I'm using my little palette knife there to just cut a small incision into my clay to insert a wire so I'm using the thin wire again just to support the arms because it is quite thin um, and then I'm closing the clay up again and just smoothing out the incision line to create a nice smooth finish Be quite careful with this process as the wire do tend to, um, it can move around inside your clay, so just be careful with that. So I started by bending my clay in, um, into the arm and then the shoulder. Now because you're making two arms left and right, you need to do the opposites for each one so that you have your little hands and arms facing the right way rather than two matching ones, so be mindful of that. So I'm just shaping her little hand and wrist so I have a bit of shape in her arms. Now they are quite thin so just be careful. I left the wire a bit long so that I have something to stick into the body and then I used my smoothing tool to just join that um, up really nice and smooth. As you will see her shoulders, I wanted this to be nice and smooth. Make sure you do the same for the back of her um, arms as well to create a nice smooth finish and make her look really pretty. So I started doing some details on her collarbone too. It looks a bit funny right now but just bear with me, it will be smoothed out later. In hindsight I think I made her arms just a little bit too long but I quite liked how she turned out anyway. Now you can be creative. Um, with her arms and her posture or, and posing with her arms as well but I'm making mine just sort of drape next to her body and then sort of bend down onto and she's going to hold some flowers. So as you saw I trimmed the wire for where the head will sit so that it doesn't pierce straight through the head. I rolled out a little ball of clay and roughly shaped it and held it up against the fairy just to see if it matches so it looks in proportion. I added a weeny little nose. Now I decided not to add too much detail to her face one, I'm not very good at making small detailed fe feminine looking fairies faces. I'm good at doing the pixie faces because they, they all seem to turn out like men. But So I didn't really want to try too hard with her face. I just added a nose and she's going to have no face. <laughs> so I added the head onto the body and I moved on to the arms again and just created little thumbs. Now because she's going to hold some flowers, I didn't really spend too much time with details on her hands as it will be covered anyway, but I did like the thought of just adding some details. But um, if you're going to make your fairy hold some flowers, the hands, you can't really see it anyway, so don't stress if the hands look a bit ho-hum, <laughs> it's alright. Now you can decorate your fairy any way you like. This is such a fun project and you can be so creative. So as you can see here, I'm just pushing her little arms together and making her hands hold each other. And I'm just inserting a little wire to create a, like a little tunnel for where I can insert my flowers later after she has baked. And then it's time to decorate her head. So you can add any kind of hairstyle you want. You can use real hair or I'm just using little snakes of yellow clay to create like a little blonde fairy and covering all of the head. Now you can be creative in hairstyles or the size of the, the in detail you want for the hair. But I quite like these little thick little snakes of hair and making it sort of look like it's blowing from her face across. So this is just how I did it. You can do it any way you like and be as creative as you would like. This is your fairy and she can turn out perfectly the way you want her to. Now this is probably one of my favorite bits of my fairy is her little fairy wings. I found these little see-through little craft leaves almost. Yeah they're leaves and I use like a beige type color or maybe it's a white actually and a pink one and I glued it together with some E6000 glue with a little piece of wire. Now I'm going to make little imprints of where my um, my wings will be sitting so I'm using a thin wire as well and just inserting that into the clay before I bake it and then I'll remove it so that I have like a little imprint and a perfect little match for once she's done. So go ahead and bake your fairy according to your polymer clay's instructions and allow it to cool. 
Now, to actually decorate your fairy, again, it's up to you, but I just decorated her by adding a tutu around her waist. Now, this was pretty tricky with her arm, so keep in mind of this before you start making yours and making sure that you leave enough room underneath the arms or around the body area so that you can add a little dress or skirt or whatever you want to do. I just used little strips of pink and blue tulle and just hot glued it all around her waist making it nice and fluffy and frilly and then I went ahead and trimmed a little strip of white felt. Now I carefully inserted my felt through the gap of her arm and her body wrapping the felt around from the front towards the back. Now you can be creative in the sense of how you want your dress to look at the back. I played around with some um, ideas and positioning of the felt and felt like it turned out pretty lovely well I thought it looked lovely I quite liked how it pulled out the front too as I didn't want it to be super smooth and skin tight I like that look because like a pleated look almost so here you can see I played around do I want it to be all together or do I want to create like a little almost like a, a penguin tail or whatever it's called those tuxedo suits I thought it looked quite nice with like the little pointy bits at the back I'm not a dressmaker, but you can be creative with your dresses or the bodice of your dress or skirt, whatever. This is your fairy as well, so you can make your fairy to be any way you want. To complete my fairy, I'm adding her little wings by adding a little bit of E6000 glue to my wire and then inserting it into our pre-positioned holes for the wings. Now I make sure that my little fairy wings are matching by adding the pink um, wing at the bottom so that the white both white wings are at the top and then both pink ones are at the bottom remove any excess glue and here I have my little flowers that I was talking about this is just paper flowers that have these little wires attached that I just trimmed and twisted together to create like a little bouquet I'm adding a little bit of hot glue just on top of her hands to allow that flowers and the wire to stick to her hands and not fall off later so here it's handy to have the pre-drilled hole for the flowers to sit in but if you don't have any wires on your flowers just glue it straight onto her hands. And that's your fairy pretty much done. There's my fairy, let me know what you think. I quite liked how she doesn't have a face and I feel like that she's got some mystery about her and I, I just I really love my fairy and how she turned out. Now I actually made a fairy tree not too long ago, I'll have that linked up the top right hand side corner in one of the cards. If you want to check out how to make your very own fairy tree, go ahead and click on that and you can check out that video as well. But for now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below letting me know your thoughts on my fairy and any ideas that you might have for your fairy. I'd love to hear from you. I want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel so far. This is crazy. We've hit over 800 subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please click that big red subscribe button. It just notifies you when my next video is up. I thank you so much for watching and remember to be crafty with your giving. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.